Hey, it's Barb from Wonderful Works. Before we get started, I want to tell you something important about today's video. You may notice it looks a little bit different than our latest training videos. And that's because it's one of the very first ones we ever made. Because anxiety is one of the very first things that you should learn about when it comes to serving children well. Thanks for being here today. So it's Sunday and you're serving in the preschool room at church. Boys and girls are streaming in, finding their favorite toys, and you can't wait to get the service started. But then... Someone doesn't want to be separated from her mom and dad. Anxiety. A feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Of course, we all know what anxiety feels like, and if you don't, just go bathing suit shopping. <laughs> just kidding. Not kidding. Okay, back to the script. We can all recognize anxiety when we see it, right? It looks like this. A sweet little girl with tear-filled eyes feeling scared. And how do we react to this? Yes, that's right. We meet it with compassion. So let's ask ourselves, how do we react when someone is aggressive, withdrawn, feeling ill, bossy, restless, or trying for perfection? Because guess what? Those are all anxiety too. And while we should approach each person with the same compassion we showed the little teary-eyed angel, many times we handle these behaviors very differently. So what is it that all these anxious behaviors have in common? Well, while each person may behave differently, they each need the same things, like the need to be understood, to feel in control, and to feel safe. The good news is there are a few simple things that we can do that can help meet each person right where they are. First, listen to how the person is feeling without correcting them. It really isn't important if you think they're justified in their feelings. It only matters that they feel heard and understood. Next, make expectations clear. People feel anxious when they feel confused, so lay out what preferred behaviors look like and don't assume that kids will get it on their own. Then give the anxious person a choice on next steps. People feel more relaxed when they feel like they have some control over their own situation. And creating a predictable routine can help kids feel less stressed too. This helps because they'll know what's coming next, and if things change, that's okay. But be sure to give a heads up first so the kids will be prepared. And you're going to want to respect personal space. Sometimes people who are experiencing anxiety feel overwhelmed, and having someone get in their space can make this feeling worse. And most importantly, no matter what behavior you're addressing, approach with empathy. Use open body language and a confident, warm tone of voice. This communicates that you care and helps people to feel safer. So what about that teary-eyed little angel who's missing her mom and dad? Will the techniques we just talked about help her too? Yep, these tips are always best practices. But don't worry, there are a few other things you may want to try to help a child who's dealing with separation anxiety at church. Like, if a child asks when their mom is coming back, be honest and specific to their level, of course. You may say something like, Mommy will be back after we play and sing. You can offer a comfort item for the child to hold or help them pick out a toy that may grab their interest. Most importantly, give them any space that they need, but let them know that you or someone else is right there to help them when they're ready. Alright, that was pretty good, but there's one more thing before you go. The next time you go bathing suit shopping, I mean, feel anxious, stop and notice how you're behaving. Then ask yourself what it is that you need, because chances are, is to feel understood, in control, and safe. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time.